Good evening. It's good to see each one of you with us tonight. Hope that you are doing well, having a good evening, and enjoying this cooler weather. Uh, we are um, definitely cooler than we were last week. And so, uh, hope that uh, all of you will will stay well. A um, couple of things I want to ask you to do is help me to uh, pray for several of our people that are under the weather, and uh, we want to remember them. Uh, Tracy Baird uh, is not feeling well, so please remember her, and for God to minister healing in her body. Um, and uh, also uh, Geneva Edwards. Um and um, Susan Windsor, and also remember Denisa. She's not feeling well tonight, and uh, so I'll be trying to do this myself. <laughs> so, but it's good to see all of you with us, and um, just want to encourage you to be careful, uh, protect yourself, and uh, stay safe and stay well. Uh, that's the big thing. So please remember these, and we'll have prayer at the end of our Bible study tonight. Um, but remember, Denisa, Tracy Baird, Geneva Edwards, Susan Windsor, those specifically, and then all, all the others that, that we have, so many. So please uh, be much in, much in prayer. Um, we will continue our Bible study of the book of Hebrews, but before we do, let me just make a couple of, I mention a couple of things. One is this coming Sunday, uh, 10 o'clock, you want to join with us, and if you can, be in the building. Uh, we will uh, be sharing with you some, I think, very important things that God's put on my heart, and so uh, that'll be Sunday, 10 o'clock, join with us as we meet for the second time of this new year of 2022. Um, so be with us. If you can't be in the building, please remember to join us via live feed, Facebook Live, and uh, it'll also be available on YouTube uh, the next day. So please remember that, and uh, we, we thank you for your sharing and your time if you have any comments or questions or anything, just please let us know. Share it uh, if you can. Type it in, and if we can, we will try to answer those things for you. Uh, we're in the book of Hebrews, and I'm actually upstairs in my study, um, so it probably looks a little bit different tonight. Uh, this is where <laughs> I spend a whole lot of time uh, just doing work and uh, studying and working on 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 church stuff and and things and so please uh, please be much in prayer for God to lead us through this year for His will to be accomplished in our hearts and in our lives. Um, we're studying the book of Hebrews and we start chapter seven tonight. And so if you have your Bible, uh, we're going to read from chapter seven. Beginning verse 1, and as I, is our practice through this study, we'll read a few verses and talk about it, and then read a few more and uh, make some uh, ending comments. Um, I love the book of Hebrews. It's a powerful book about the reality of Jesus Christ and why he is superior to everything that has come before him. And that's exactly what the writer has been sharing over these first six chapters, that he is he is superior to uh, the the priest. He's superior to those things, those that have gone before him. He is greater than Aaron and and all of in the priesthood. Uh, he is at, of the order of Melchizedek, and we looked at that already. We're going to look at that again tonight because it's in chapter seven. And so, uh, uh, chapter 7, beginning verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, 
who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. So notice what he says. He says he's of the order of Melchizedek when Abraham comes back from battle and he is conquered and has all the spoils. He gives, pays tithes to Melchizedek, a tenth of everything that was taken. And the name of the, of the king, king of righteousness, king of peace, which is a forerunner and speaking of Christ. Uh, and that's why the Bible tells us he is of the order of Melchizedek. Um, verse 3 says, Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. Now, there's a couple of lessons in this passage of Scripture. One is, and this is about giving, people equate giving with the law. But if you understand what Hebrews tells us, Abraham paid tithes before, hundreds of years before the law is given. So what he, what he is establishing is, is the giving and and he gave a tenth of, of what he had, of the spoils that he had taken. Now, there's a couple of things also in that. The priesthood of Jesus in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is called the priest of the Most High. His name means righteousness. He's called the King of Peace. Uh, the one instance that he exercised his priesthood in the Old Testament reveals uh, something about his sustenance, imparting blessing and instituting communion. Some believe that this similarity between him and his priesthood, between him and Christ, uh, is, is one of those appearances of pre, uh, pre-birth, pre-coming into this world of Christ that it is actually uh, Christ that re represents Melchizedek. While I can't say, I don't know that. I know what he says about without father, without mother, but that could also be that he was unknown and we don't have a recording of Melchizedek, his genealogy. We don't know who his mother or father was. And that's it could simply mean that. Or it could be a pre-incarnate Christ. Um, there, are, there are advocates of that on both sides. Regardless of whether it was a pre-incarnate Christ, uh, the, the important thing is that we understand that what, what the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews is trying to get us to see is that Jesus Christ follows after this pattern, having... No, no genealogy, and you say, "Well, genealogies in man." Yes, but but his father was God. Okay, you're given the genealogy of Joseph, but we know that Jesus, that Joseph was not Jesus's father, but he was born into uh, the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Levi was the tribe that the priest. And the priests could only come from the tribe of Re Levi, and their genealogy had to be proven, had to be shown. And what the writer of Hebrews is saying is, look, I want you to understand that Christ is superior to the law that was given to Moses, establishing the priesthood of men, because it goes back to former, to the things of Melchizedek, and he, not the genealogy of Aaron, that That is not what is important here. The important thing is that he has been declared by oath and by promise to be the high priest. 
And that's, that's what he begins to tell us. Look at what he says, picking up in verse 5. He says, And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who receives the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. Even, excuse me, even Levi, who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Therefore, if perfection were through Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order of Melchizedek and not to be called according to the order of Aaron? His whole point, his whole statement is, look, if everything could be accomplished in the law and under the law, then there was no need for anybody else to come. But we know that perfection did not come through the law. It, it, it It's impossible. All the law did was the point that we are sinful and that we need a savior. That's what it points to. And so the argument that he is giving about the high priest of Jesus Christ is that he is of the order that transcends that was before the law was ever given. That's how he can be a high priest because, okay, he's not of the tribe of Levi's. He is not from Aaron, but he is from God who purposely does this before the law is given and foreshadows a Christ of one who is better that is yet to come. And so now the argument is, look, I want you to understand that when Abraham paid tithes, it was symbolic of all of his descendants paying tithes. That's what he said. He said he was still in the loins of his father Abraham. He hadn't been born yet. That is, that is why, you see, when people commit murder, you have to understand that, especially if you murder a young person, you're not just murdering that person. You are murdering the descendants of that person who never had the ability to be born. It's a grave thing when you, how precious life is. And that's what the Bible's trying to get us to see and understand is that life is a precious commodity. And that, that it's not just, okay, I'm an island to myself and I can do whatever I want. I affect generations. I affect generations that follow me. I believe that blessings and curses can be handed down to generation. And the Bible says that the sins of the father are to the second and third generation, but the blessings of the righteous are to a thousand generations. What he's saying is, I believe I have received and reaped blessings because of my parents, because of Denise's parents, because of their sacrifice, because of what they did for the Lord. I believe that that blessing was in, in me. Now, you say, well, I'm the first one in my family that gave their heart and life to Jesus. Praise God, because now you have an opportunity to break the curse and to send forth the blessing to the generations that follow you. That's why I tell people the greatest gift we can give our children is not money and things and possessions or worldly uh, possessions. It is to know Jesus Christ. That's the greatest blessing because that transcends this life and gives us something that goes far beyond this moment. Most important thing, perfection didn't come under the law, verse 11. It didn't come under the Levitical priesthood. 
What further need was there for another priest should rise according to the order? He says, look, if perfection came under the law and through the priesthood, then we don't need another priest. But we know that's not true. And he goes on to talk about why. For the priesthood being changed, verse 12, for the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he whom these things are spoken belong to another tribe from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. And yet it is far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. Ooh. Now, that's, that's powerful. The power of an end. You see, that's the reason that we needed a, a new order of priests. Verse 17, for he testifies, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now that's a that's a quote from Psalm 104 or 110 verse 4. That's a quote and he quotes it again in a little more detail. The writer is, is trying to get us to see the superiority of Christ's priesthood to the priesthood of the Levites. That, the Levi priesthood, failed to perfect anything. The right of the priesthood of the son was vested in his own personality. He had an endless life. And this implies the absolute perfection of his nature. What he's saying is, look, Levi's, the priesthood of the Levi's, you know what? They couldn't perfect anything. They couldn't even perfect themselves and they died. It passed on to the next generation and the next generation. But now we have a high priest that has endless life and has absolute perfection of life. The continuation of this person. The superiority of the priesthood of the son consists in that he, through him, a better hope was given to men through which they might draw nigh to God and so ultimately realize perfection. Now, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to pursue it. We're supposed to move on to perfection for the mark of the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. I know, and you know, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But Jesus Christ is perfect, and he's perfect in me. That's, that's the whole thing. It's that grace. It's that mercy. And it, it's only uh, able or ability is because of the life that Jesus lived and has now been applied to my life. That's something the, the Levitical priesthood could not do. Look, look at what he goes on to say in verse 18. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as he is not made perfect or not made priest without an oath, for if they had become priests without an oath, but he with an oath by him who said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest uh, uh, forever according to the order of Melchizedek. That cannot be said about any Levitical high priest or any priest. He was not able to be the priest forever. By so much more, verse 22, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. You know what a surety is? 
It's a promissory note. It's a, it's a, it's a guarantee that what God, you see, that's what the Holy Spirit is. That's what the Bible tells us. The Holy Spirit was given to us as a security note, a, a, a deposit that what God has promised will come to pass. He's not just using endless words and not just saying words to, to, to hear himself talk. But he's promised, not only am I giving you new life now, I'm promising you a better life. I'm promising you an eternal life. And I'm giving you my Holy Spirit, my very presence to live inside of you as a promissory note to prove to you that I will do what I said I will do. And that's found for us in Ephesians. That's, that's what Paul writing to the Ephesians told us, that he has been given to us, guaranteeing what we have been promised will come to pass. Verse 23. Also, there were many priests because there were they were prevented by death from continuing. What we've said, no one could be the priest forever. They died, the next guy stepped up. Next guy stepped up. You got older, you couldn't do it, the next guy stepped up. But he... Because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. I want you to think about that. If you don't get anything else that I've shared with you tonight, I want you to center in on verse 24. He continues forever. The one who saved you. It's the one who's going to see you all the way through to the end. The one who saved you is the one who not only is going to see you all the way through to the end, but he's going to be there at the end to welcome you in. Wow. No other priest can say that. No other priest... That's why it supersedes the Levitical. That's why it's better than what was before. Put a lot of stock in that, okay. But I'm just telling you, this is better than anything they had. And Jesus is the priest continuously. Verse 25. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. <coughs> wow, that is a powerful, powerful thought. He is able to save to the uttermost. Pastor, I'm so far in the mire and in the dirt and in sin, he can't read. He can reach you. He's there. He's already paid the price for everything that you are in need of right now. The only time the door is shut to you is when you deny him and turn away from him and want no part of him. He's made the way. There's no sin he can't wash away. There's no dirt he can't scrub away. There's nothing that he can't reach out to you and grab hold to. And I know somebody said, well, there is an unpardonable sin, but that's when you totally deny Christ and attribute the things of God to, to the works of the enemy. Or you come to the end of your life and you draw your last breath still denying Christ. There is no alternative. There is no other way to be saved. There is no other door. You must come in through Jesus. The fact that the unchanging Christ continues as a high priest logically means that there is an unchanging priesthood. The Greek word that is translated unchangeable, carries the idea of valid, unalternable. 
The word was used at the end of legal contracts. Our Lord's priesthood is in heaven. It is valid and unalterable. In other words, nobody's going to replace him. No, nobody's going to supersede him. Nobody's going to undercut him. No, he is high priest. He was high priest. He will be high priest. There is no other. Thank you, Jesus. Because of that, we can have confidence in the midst of this shaking and changing world. That's why the Bible tells us that we can come before his throne with boldness. And that boldness doesn't mean haughty or, or lifted up or full of ourselves. It means we can come in full confidence that our high priest knows who we are, knows how to minister to us, hears our cry, and not only hears, but wants to reach out and minister and to touch our hearts and our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Look at what he says in verses 26 through 28. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, then for the people's, for this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Look, he says, look, not only is he endless, not they died. He's not going to die. He's going to be the high priest forever, but he doesn't even have to offer up sacrifices for himself because he was the sacrifice. And that one time did it for all sin and he knew no sin. He was perfect then. He's perfect now. That's the high priest. He's better than the Levitical high priest. They had to go in there and offer up offerings for their sins so that they could offer up offerings for my sin. But Jesus is the perfect high priest. He who knew no sin can reach out to me and touch my life. For the law appoints as high priest Men who have weaknesses. But the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfected forever. Wow. First, there was the oath to appointment. Second, there is the perpetuity of office. There is no necessity for any other high priest. For God has appointed him by oath forever. He is therefore able to save to the uttermost because he ever liveth to make intercession. Now, as we conclude with this, think about that. He lives to make intercession. You know what that means? He's interceding for me, for you. He knows what we need before we even ask. That's how great our high priest is. That's how wonderful our high priest is. Because he went through everything that he went through so he would know how to minister to us, how to touch us in our time of need. And he's crying out on our behalf. He doesn't have selfish motives. He's pure. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome high priest we have. Superior to the Levitical high priest because he lives forever and no one will ever replace him. Superior to the Levitical high priest because he had no sin and did not have to offer up a sin sacrifice for himself. The one sacrifice he offered up was for my sin and the sins of all the world. He took upon himself in that on that cross my sin and your sin. 
I nailed him to the cross. You nailed him to the cross. It's so important that we understand what God is trying to get us to see through his word. He hears us. He knows us. He cares. His word says, cast all of your care upon him because he cares for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your interceding for me when I need it the most. I, like Paul, have come to the place of realizing that when I am at my weakest moments, he's at his strongest. Because I'm not relying on any of my ability or any of my strength. I have none. I'm resting on him. I'm resting on Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He is our high priest. Let's pray. Father, <coughs> I thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for being our high priest. I thank you that you are far superior to the Levitical high priest. I thank you that you have no end. I thank you that you offered yourself as a sin sacrifice for me, for us, that we might come to know a saving grace and become your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you intercede for us. You cry out for our behalf. God, I pray that you would move and minister in each one of us tonight. Lord, you know every need. And I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would minister to each one. Those that are with us right now, those that will watch it later. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to them through your word, through your spirit. And God, I lift up those who have special requests tonight. Not just the ones we know of, but all their needs. I lift them up to you. We pray a special prayer for Tracy. We pray, God, that you'd minister to her. We're believing you to touch her body and bring healing. We're believing you to put your hand about her, give her traveling mercies, and Lord, that you would just keep her safe at this time, and that, Lord, you would be that strong tower she's in need of right now. Minister your healing touch to her, and we believe you to do it. Lord, I pray for Geneva that you would minister to her, touch her, bring healing in her lungs. I pray, Lord, that everything be cleared, that you would just give her your peace, the comfort of your spirit. Lord, that you would minister mightily into her. And I'm believing you to raise her up and minister complete and total healing. Father, we thank you. Pray for Susan that you would minister to her and continue to touch her eyes as she goes to more doctors. I pray, God, that you would bring healing in her body. Open the, the minds and the hearts of those that are ministering to her through the doctors and nurses. And God, I pray that you would just minister healing in her body. And I pray for Denisa. I pray, God, that you would touch her and bring healing in her. Lord, we're believing you to touch her in might and in power. May she just sense your awesome presence. And Lord, you would just give her your peace and the comfort of your spirit. And Father, I thank you for the way you're moving right now and the healing touch that you're giving. For by your stripes, she is made whole. They're all made whole. And we thank you for it all. Father, have your way. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Be with us. 
Watch over us through the remainder of this week. And Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you for joining with us tonight. And I want to remind you that Sunday, 10 o'clock, shouldn't have any problems. I know they're calling for a little more snow Thursday night, Friday morning. I don't think it's going to be much. I wish it would. That's just oddest. I know some of you don't want it. That fallen Monday was beautiful. Uh, I just wish it had been colder earlier so it uh, some of it would have stayed around a little while. But it was beautiful while it fell. Um, but please remember, Sunday, be with us. Also, the 15th, uh, Man Up. Uh, Phil's inviting all the men to join with us uh, in our building, 9 o'clock on the 15th. Don't forget Man Up. And uh, we got some information coming to you about Unashamed. We'll be sharing that on Sunday. Uh, so please remember all of those things. Continue to support the church. Continue to be much in prayer. Uh, as as you can, give as the Lord leads you to give. And I'm, I'm going to throw this in there. You have to understand, read Hebrews 7 and understand tithes were paid before the law was given. So it's not a legalistic thing about tithes. It was done before the law was ever even given. So continue to give, continue to bless as you can. Go to infusionchurchnc.com. Go to our giving page. You can give through Easy Tithe. You can give through text giving, or you can mail it in to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Thank you for joining with us. We look forward to your being with us this weekend. May God bless you and keep you, and may you know how blessed you are to have a high priest who can never die. He will always be high priest. Lord bless you. We'll see you this weekend.